to Acting Deputy President. Well, a couple of weeks ago, at the end of the last sitting fortnight, a group of pro-coal Labor MPs outed themselves with a mock gotcha setup that didn't fool too many political insiders. The ringleaders of the so-called Otis Group seem pretty comfortable with the message getting out there. Here, in 2020, in the face of a climate emergency, there's an organised group in the federal parliamentary ALP that is unashamedly pro-coal. There has been little, if any, denying or recanting by those named in the story, from which I can only assume that what was run by Peter Van Onselen was pretty accurate. What I wanted to talk about today is just who is the Otis Group. A number of members of the Otis Group do represent coal mining electorates, chief among them being the member for Hunter. Now, I might disagree, in fact I do, with their political response to the structural decline of thermal coal and counsel them against selling false hope to their, their electorates. But I can see their logic flawed, though it may be. But these Labor members and senators, who by sheer geography can be linked to coal, don't of themselves explain the Otis Group. What is perhaps most curious about the Otis Group is the prominence of members and senators aligned to the Shop Distributive and Allied Employees Association, the Shoppies. Let's go through the list. Senator Ciccioni is a Shoppie. Senator Polly, a Shoppie. Senator Kitching, well, perhaps an honorary Shoppie by virtue of factional prowess. And of course, Senator Farrell, probably the senior Shoppie in this parliament. From the House, Mr Molino, Shoppie. Mr Champion, a Shoppie. Ms Ridgeworth, a Shoppie. Mr Gosling, a Shoppie. And Anthony Byrne, a so-called mod, which is a new factional grouping that Guy Rundle has described as, and I quote, quantum Shoppies existing in two factional states simultaneously, end quote. So by my count, that's nearly half of the pro-coal pro group of ALP parliamentarians who are Shoppies. And a number of these shoppies come from places like South Australia, the Northern Territory and my home state of Tasmania, where the coal industry is either quite small or non-existent. How very, very curious. Not from coal mining unions, not from coal mining states, but with the numbers in a pro-coal faction. The Otis Group could easily be known as the new National Civic Council. What on earth are these Labor members who found themselves in the parliament because of their affiliation with a union that represents retail workers doing spruiking for coal? Now, I've spoken previously on the political industrial complex that is the SDA, uh, how consistently they've acted as a handbrake on progressive politics within not only the Australian Labor Party but, by extension, our country itself. As the keepers of the flame for the religious extremism of Bob Santa Maria, it's been the shoppies that have so often and for so long held Labor back on social issues. Witness the final vote on the marriage equality bill in this parliament on the back of a clear result of a nationwide plebiscite less than three years ago and after railroading Labor national conference after national conference on the issue, there, standing against progress, standing alongside prejudice, were a good number of shoppies voting no to marriage equality. And as parliamentarians aligned to a union that's been so close to the corporates that the Fair Work Commission found they'd struck an agreement that left 500,000 Coles workers worse off than if there'd been no agreement at all. Senator Abetz once described Joe de, Bruyne, de, Joe de Bruyne, the national president of the SDA, as I quote Senator Abetz, a role model of trade union officialdom. He is the type of official that gives trade unionism a good name, end quote. Well, I'm here to tell you, if you're a trade union official and you've got er Senator Eric Abetz's endorsement, you are in a whole lot of trouble. But I've got to ask those members and senators who are shoppies of what benefit is hugging coal to the hundreds and thousands of people, many of them kids, who are members of the SDA and who gave the SDA the power to put those very members and senators here into the parliament. In other words, exactly what is the connection between retail and coal? Because I just can't see it. But what I do see is a malignancy within the factional system upon which the modern Australian Labor Party is built. Not content with having used their factional power to suppress social progress and to protect the dominance of the big corporate retail sector in this country, the shoppies are now using their factional power to put a handbrake on climate action. 
What I see is that as a block, the shoppies are signalling to, signalling to the coal barons that they are their friend in this place, that they are Senator Canavan's and Mr Joyce's equivalents inside the Australian Labor Party. What I see is not members and senators guided by some deeper philosophy heading for the light on the hill, but simply a power base that is roving around looking for the next industry group to leverage off. What I see in the Otis Group is, once again, yet again, to the detriment of this country, a demonstration that, for the shoppies, it's all about the numbers.